Good morning, everybody. It seems like we have some positive news to share. Eric Weddle, James Jones joining me with their thoughts about week 18, uh, about the playoffs, and certainly about DeMar Hamlin. Thank you for hanging out with us today, and I hope everyone is doing okay. Now, here is what we know about the latest with DeMar Hamlin. The Buffalo Bills tweeted this update just a few minutes ago. Per the physicians caring for DeMar Hamlin at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, DeMar has shown remarkable improvement over the past 24 hours. While still critically ill, he He's demonstrated that he appears to be neurologically intact. His lungs continue to heal, and he's making steady progress. We are grateful for the love and support we have received. Bill's cornerback, Kair Elam, tweeted, Our boy is doing better, awake, and showing more signs of improvement. Thank you, God. Keep the prayers coming, please. All love, three. We also have Ian Rappaport. Uh, who said that DeMar Hamlin opened his eyes last night and is responsive, truly incredible. One thing that's very clear from speaking to those close to him, they are endlessly appreciative of the medical care given to Hamlin on the field immediately, then over the last 72 hours. And then he quote tweeted that and said DeMar Hamlin's been gripping the hands of those close to him. Another very positive sign. So my first thought is we have a long way to go. This is a beautiful step, and all love is right. All love for three, as Elam said. This is prayer, and this is community, and this is positive thinking, and this is compassion at work, compassionate action at work at that. So we continue to bring you the very latest, and uh, a very sincere thank you to all the medical professionals involved. Ian just said it. The first responders who are on the field, the nurses and doctors at UC Medical Center, thank you, and thank you to the Bills also for keeping us updated as this fight continues. And uh, we'll, of course, bring you the very latest as we hear it. Uh, it's not its not like a sigh of relief I'm feeling, but man, we were not hearing news for a, a minute there and day in, day out, and it is just, cr you're sleeping with your phone, hoping to hear something and have the, you know, the up and at em show, group text light up with something. So to be two minutes until air, and there's another show in the studio where we're, you know, tiptoeing in here, and to see something that's a step in the right direction is certainly something to hold on to. Like I said, long way to go. I'm sure, as you saw, still critically ill. That's according to the Bill's statement uh, as of a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And uh, there's, you know, a bunch of angles to this. We'll have Eric Weddle on to talk about it. He's un taking on coaching a high school football team next year. This is a guy who's played at the safety position. We'll talk to him about that brotherhood, that camaraderie, uh, and how he might be approaching coaching a little bit differently. Maybe not. I haven't talked to him, but excited to hear uh, his insights. And then James Jones will be with us in studio as well. And I have not seen him yet this morning, but I assume he is also uh, breathing a bit of a, a sigh of relief or breathing a little easier out there, uh, knowing that we are taking a step in the right direction. So we thank you. We thank all the insiders. We thank everyone who's joined us this week um, and has remained diligent and has remained compassionate and has remained positive in thinking about DeMar Hamlin. Now, as for the games, the NFL moving forward with week 18. We, you, we are still waiting to hear what will happen with the bills Bengals game. Will it be postponed? Will it be canceled? NFL executive Troy Vincent, he's the, he's the face of this. He told the media yesterday that everything is being considered, but all indications are that week 18 is going on as scheduled, and that's going to be a challenge for players going back on the field, even with positive news, and hopefully it's more positive tomorrow and the next day, and it certainly will help. But we had Dr. T.M. Robinson-Mosley on yesterday, and I asked her about some of the challenges these players might face this weekend and how coaches can help get them back ready for action. It is very challenging to think about going back and playing. And uh, the first initial thing is being able to acknowledge it. We can't say, oh, it's going to be fine. Um, everything is going to roll as, as, as normal. Um, we are in some really uncharted kind of uh, circumstances right now. Um, we have to acknowledge the risk is real and that um, fear and concern, both for themselves, um, but also for DeMar, for the organizations, when you step out there, it is, it's risky. It's high risk. Yes, there's high reward, but the, the risk uh, is quite high. And so starting to be able to normalize that and name that is really important because it helps us to move forward to think about strategies um, to advise and support um, the athletes. And you mentioned coaches as well. Mm -hmm. This is a very difficult situation 
uh, as, as coaches, as media, as athletic trainers, uh, as support staff, even front office and GMs, the entire sport enterprise is impacted um, when there's a traumatic event, a catastrophic injury. And so our output is really high when we're working in sport. It's intense, it's fast. We have to show a lot of agility. We have to translate that into the way that we show up and provide resources and care. So we have to game plan around how we're gonna help folks take care of themselves. So having uh, licensed mental health providers present on staff, um, accessible, whether that's through telehealth, also physically there in the space, mm -hmm. um, because if you don't need it, fine. But if you need it, it's there. It's this um, real, kind of peace of mind to be able to have people on hand and have resources on hand for everyone. We're especially thinking about the players, but we're thinking about everyone who's impacted in the organization and, and those who um, who know um, Damar and, and folks uh, who don't. This is a very human experience uh, to witness that. And so we want to make sure that everyone is equipped to have the tools and the resources because that impacts the outcome and also impacts whether people are able to show up at all. It was so helpful and I'm so grateful to um, Dr. Mosley for taking the time to talk to us and I know that she was very busy. Coaches were calling her. Coaches were calling her to check in on what they can do to provide their players with the best possible resources to cope, to heal, to talk even. And we I talked a lot yesterday about that number uh, 988 that you can call, that you can text, whether it's about this and what happened Monday night, whether it's about something else. Uh, it is a free resource for everyone to be able to use. So I highly encourage Solomon and Thomas, Dak Prescott, they certainly do their thing uh, to help promote 988, and that's something that's available to anybody watching right now and certainly anybody around the league. And, you know, you get this memo from Commissioner Roger Goodell, and it says that uh, mental health resources are going to be provided to all of the players, and it's just like a line in a, in a memo. So you think and you ask yourself, like, what does that really mean, and how are these coaches going to handle this? this co these coaches who I am looking to for leadership in advancing the way it should be handled versus all of that we know about culture and NFL locker rooms and how you play through injury and you got to be the tough guy. Well, out of that conversation yesterday, I was so, I don't want to say impressed because it sounds like condescending in some way, but it was really outstanding to see and hear some of the sound bites pour in. We sat in our conference room here uh, as these coaches started to hit the podiums and we were like, look at, the, look at what, this, what this one is saying and look at what Tom is saying. And, look what, and uh, it really showed an emphasis on the player as a person. Unprecedented in my opinion. So take a listen to what a few, just a few of the head coaches across the league had to say about supporting their human players. Uh, you, you do have to move forward as a team because we do have a game to play on Sunday and, and we do have to move focus towards that. But at the same time, you don't have to move past the situation that's, that's happening right now. And we can still provide support for the players uh, that need more of that, for their family who's still two miles away here at University Hospital, um, for the Bills. So um, so you're able to, to have space to do that um, at the same time as a team move forward to focusing on uh, Baltimore on Sunday. I think you're always concerned about your guys. Um, and then when something like this happens, you're always concerned about them. Um, but, you know, that's why I have confidence in the people in our building. That's that's what we're all here for is we're here for the players, um, support staff, coaches, trainers, medical. Everybody's here to help the player um, in any way we can. You know, you, you just try to support. You just try to um, not fix, um, but listen and adjust. Um, as as people need in general it's very important that as coaches and and definitely I, i've told our players multiple times since monday uh, my my door is open um, come talk to me come talk to not only me but the resources you have available to you from professionals that uh, can provide some of uh, the things that you you know may be looking for as you process you know both your feelings um, currently and moving forward let's be honest nobody's fine um, I think we all have the tendency to say we're good. Um, so that's that's where our mind is and that's where our focus is. I mean, we obviously know what's in front of us uh, professionally, but, you know, our, our spirituality um, playbook was was open today and um, and we're working through it. 
And we talked to Dr. Mosley about this yesterday before hearing any of these coaches speak, coaches that are checking with her. I asked her, what should you not do if you're a player on one of these teams, if you're a fan who witnessed what she, a, 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 a clinically certified um, sports therapist, is telling you was a trauma that everybody saw out there. Um, and she said, don't, let me think about it. She said, don't isolate. She said, don't do anything detrimental like drinking. Uh, no judgment, but she said that's a self-soothing mechanism that isn't a positive one. Uh, and she said, don't be caught telling someone they're okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Things are going to be fine. It's not so bad because it, you have to be able to feel it. So those are just a couple of the strategies and solutions that she used that you're clearly hearing out of these coaches. We're just here to support. That's why Mike, 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 Mike McDaniel saying that. You're seeing these badass coaches abandon years of absurd machismo, I'll just say it that way, uh, and open up about humanity and compassion. And granted, I'm not going to sit here and say everything's changed, but there is an obvious palpable shift into well-being of players physically and mentally that you have to think if you have any hope or any anything to hold on to as we move forward, uh, as we, we don't move past, we don't, we move forward and try to take something, uh, you know, me, Action Jackson, and wanting to always take action about something, this might be that. Uh, and it's outstanding that the emotional welfare of these players is being so highly, universally, communally considered on this morning as we look ahead and what has to be, I don't care what you say or who you are, how much you can compartmentalize, terrifying uh, in many ways as we head into week 18 action in meaningful games where you want to show up, you want to be, be able to be there. Um, so it brought me a little bit of hope and progress in what's been a really difficult couple of days. And you, you pair that with the um, remarkable improvements that you just love to see on that lower third. Now, we're not out of it, of course, with DeMar Hamlin, so please keep those prayers, thoughts, donations coming. Over $7 million now for his, for, uh, for his uh, don't, uh, charity, beautiful, beautiful work. Um, and I loved hearing the NFL coaches talk like this. It seems, sounds like this... Uh, next generation of coaches have us in good hands. I appreciate that. We have James Jones in studio. We will have Eric Weddle in studio. Please stay here. We got to talk about what's fair, the ethics of the playoffs and all of that. that all happened today on the show. Chiefs, Andy Reid, what do you do? We have some positive updates this morning about DeMar Hamlin, and we will continue to send our thoughts and prayers to DeMar and his family in Cincinnati to talk more about this situation and how we move forward with games being played, what, two days from now, Saturday to week 18 to wrap up the regular season is nine-year NFL veteran James Jones. Hey. What's going on? How are you? I'm good. Why I'm you good. got to dress so nice when yeah, I'm over here wearing, like, <laughs> leggings? <laughs> Why you got to dress a, like this? No, I always try to bring my swag. How was Run It Back? Huh? How was, uh, not, uh, sorry, how was the more ways to Oh, win? it was good. It was good. We was over there talking some good football. You know, I always nail my upset pick. So, you know, I'm just trying to get people Who's to listen to me. Who's your upset pick? This week? Uh-huh. I'm taking uh, Deshaun Watson and the Brownies this week to beat the Steelers. Okay, well, we are, it was nice seeing you, James Jones. <laughs> you can leave. We do not root for those Browns on this show. But, okay, uh, incredibly powerful week in the NFL. There's some positive to take away from it. There's clearly tons of heartbreak, and it's, it's a really heavy. Mm. Um, I don't know that you've had a chance to, I haven't had a chance to yeah. talk to you about this. Uh, we have positive news this morning. How yeah. do you feel about it? I mean, it's good. I, I think it's real positive, especially for the, the Buffalo Bills teammates to understand and know that it's positive signs coming from their brother because I've, I've been in the situations to where I've seen my brothers laying on the football field. I've seen Nick Collins get a neck injury, you know, in Carolina, and, um, you know, his career came to an end. I've seen Jermichael Finley get a neck injury and lay on the football field, and his career come to the end. And the emotions that you're dealing with as you see your brother laying on the football field, at that point in time in that game, you don't want to go back out there and play the football game. And the fear for your brother is something that I, I don't wish on anybody. And to get positive signs knowing that they're doing better, you know, that was a sigh of relief for us, you know, and as a brother and as part of his family, you know, you're like, okay, cool, our brother's doing good, you know. Not saying it's just all about the game, mm -hmm. but we understand our brother's doing good now. You know, we're going to go out there and fight for him, but it gives you a sigh of relief knowing that, you know, he's doing okay. And, you know, when it happened, when the situation had happened, it was crazy because my mom called me and she said, I loved every bit of watching you play, but I do not miss it. I'm glad you are done because I sat on the edge of my seat every single game 
because I never wanted none of that to happen. And she said, I'm praying for his family. She said, I don't even, I can't even imagine what his mom is going through right now. But she said, I'm so glad you're done. And she brought up a time, she was like, I remember the time where you came across the middle and got your helmet knocked off. Mm. And she said, as a mother, that was the scariest time for me. Even though you ran and scored, that play right there, I wish you would have came at the, at, to me at the end of the locker room like, mom, I'm done with football. You know, and she said, the fear that I had watching you play, even though I knew it was joy for you, I was feared, I was scared every single moment, edge of my seat. So she was like, just really like, I uh, pray and hope that his mom's all right and hope he comes out of this all right. But, you know, as family members watching, it's, it's scary. And it's crazy because I told my mom, I never took the football field thinking I could die. Now, I took the football field knowing that, hey, I could have these type injuries, that's part of the game. But I never took the field thinking that I can die. And I think that is what really brought everybody to tears, those players that was on the mm -hmm. field, because it's one thing seeing a crazy injury. you like, oh, you know, I've seen leg injuries before. I've seen that. But to see your brother on the field getting CPR and, and things like that, knowing that, hold on, they're trying to bring him back like he possibly can die. You don't, you don't take the field thinking that. So, you know, them having to go through that, I know that's tough, and I know them seeing this and reading this today and getting this update today, it was a sigh of relief for them. But now, you, and I agree with you, Mark mm -hmm. uh, Ingram was on our show, said the same thing. You know what you sign up for, you know the mm -hmm. risk, but you don't think you're risking your life. Exactly. And me watching, we make sort of a, we are ignorant to it too, mm -hmm. where it's we are watching, and yes, that, that might be a blown eye ACL, but I'm looking yeah. for the thumb, that the wave, that everyone's okay. But now you can't really, you have to shift your thinking a little mm -hmm. bit, right? Now we all have to collectively come to terms with the fact that what we're going to watch mm -hmm. and these players are going to go suit up for, yeah. there's, that risk became mm -hmm. real. Yeah. How, do you, how does the relationship with football, knowing that that's real now, yeah. affect a player? Oh, it's tough. I mean, I'll be sitting up here lying to you saying that they're not going to think about it. You know what I mean? It's something that you've seen. It's something you're going to think about, just like you've seen injuries. You know, you take the field, you know that it's possibly I can get hurt, you know. So, you know, this is a tough situation that, that they're in because emotionally you have to get yourself ready to play a football game after seeing your brother, you know, take the type of hit and, you know, go through what he was going through on that football field. So as a coach, this is an extremely hard position to be in, trying to get your players to kind of refocus knowing that you are still thinking and praying for your brother, knowing that you might not even want to go out here and play this game because you're still worried about your brother. And emotionally, you know, when you take the football field and you're not all in emotionally, that's hurt. how you get hurt, you know. So it's a tough situation to be in. You know, I think at the end of the day as players, you know, we understand, you know, number one, that's our brother. We're praying for him. We're going to be there for him 24-7. But number two, we know we still do got to go out there and do a job unless you're just one of those guys that's going to say, hey, I'm done. I'm not playing this season. Right. But if you choose to play, you have to go out there and do a job. And you want to make sure mentally and physically that you're, you're able to go play. And if you're not, you know, I would hope a lot of them would be like, look, I'm not ready. You know what I mean? Because, like, I'm sitting up here talking to you. That's how you do get hurt. So as a coach, you know, you got to find ways to make sure your team is mentally prepared and ready to go in this game emotionally. And I think this right here is the first sign. Because if I'm a teammate and I see this, this is like, okay. You know, and my I, brother, my yeah. brother's doing good. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to battle for, for him. him. I'm sure it's going to be threes all over. We're going to have be representing for him. You know, we know how much he wanted it, how much work he put into this game. And to know that he's, you know, doing better and better every single day, you know, that's a sigh of relief. And Do you like what you're seeing out of the coaches? They all spoke yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Is it, I mean, I'm trying to imagine you yeah. as a Raider, as mm -hmm. a, going to your head coach and saying, I don't feel like playing. Mm -hmm. I'm not mentally there. How would that go? Well, I mean, hopefully they would respect that. But, I mean, back then I don't think so. Maybe now they would. You know? I mean, There's definitely a difference. Don't yeah. lie. The coaches I played for, you know, I truly believe that they would respect that. Mm. Playing for Coach Mike, you know, I truly, being the family man that Coach Mike McCarthy is, I truly believe that he would respect that. J.J., if you're not mentally, physically, emotionally ready to go out here and play this game, you feel like you need some time, I feel like Coach Mike would respect that. And I would hope every coach around the National Football League, with what we just witnessed, would understand that. You know, Coach, I'm not ready to go. I don't care how big the game is. You know, mentally, I'm not ready to play in this game, you know, after seeing what happened to my brother. And, you know, for me, just the, the stand that I've seen and the praying and, and how everybody has really, you know, came together, it really shows you, you know, you compete on this football field, 
you, you battle every day, but at the end of the day, it is a true brotherhood. It is a family, and, you know, that's what we're seeing and everybody rallying each, behind, you know, Hamlin and his family. How would you want to be supported if you were a player in a locker room? Like, how could the team and the league mm -hmm. and a, your coach support you? You know what, I think it's different for every player, you know what I'm saying? But number one, I think is you got to listen to them, you know? And if, and especially as a coach, you know, you don't really sit down and just talk to Roger Goodell and say this, you know what I mean? But as a coach, you're with him 24-7. Mm -hmm. And as a player, communicate with your coach, you know, and, and let him know, hey, I'm in this thing, I'm ready to go, I want to go out here for my brother. Hey, coach, hey, this really scarred me, you know, I'm not ready, you know? Hey, I, can, I ain't gonna be no good to you this game. And hopefully they can understand that, you know. So, you know, like I said, it's a tough situation, you know, because that was, that was one of our brothers, one of our family members that we've seen on the football field and, and still really fighting and battling for his life. Thank God we're getting some positive, positive feedback from him and yeah. all that. But, you know, it's a tough situation. T. Higgins, mm -hmm. your thoughts? T. Higgins, I mean, I'm, I'm praying and I'm, and I'm hoping that, you know, number one, everybody you know, is supporting him and letting him know you didn't do nothing wrong in this situation. You know, you're playing football, you're trying to protect yourself. You know, this was one of those things to where, like, this never happens. It's, it's a routine tackle. It wasn't even like it was a violent tackle, but there's nothing dirty you did. You were playing football, you caught the football, you got tackled. You know, so I'm hoping that he's not battling with anything that he's like, it's my fault because right. it's not. And I'm hopeful, hopefully. No matter what idiot might say. Yes, no matter what idiot place. says that, you know, it, it, it has nothing to do with T. Higgins. It was no, you know, nasty play or anything by him. It was a regular football play. So for anybody to say that, it would be absolutely crazy. And I hope tomorrow we wake yeah. up and it's Friday and there's more positive mm, news. And absolutely. then Saturday, before these games get mm -hmm. played, some of them we get more positive news and we can build on that. And I like yeah. your idea of the community coming together and playing 4-3. That's what it seems to be right now. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to talk a little bit about these this Week 18 situation mm -hmm. and these playoffs. And there's obviously the Bengals and Bills part of it over in the AFC uh, with the Chiefs. Like the Chiefs, if they don't play that game they just get the one seed I know I know that's, that? that, that's that's a tough situation because when you look at the Bengals and the Buffalo Bills they did everything they possibly could to put themselves in position to get the one seed and then you're just gonna give it to Patty Mahomes and everything got to come can through they Kansas take it? City like if it's Patrick Mahomes uh, and Andy Reid can yeah. they just say okay yeah we'll take the one I don't know if you can I, I, I know but do they I mean, forfeit against the Raiders <laughs> they can't do that either that's not know, fair to yeah, them but that's what it's looking like right now because I mean I don't see how you're gonna replay the game against the Buffalo Bills and the Bengals unless you push everything back a week. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how the ins and outs of that, you know, and you got to push Super Bowl back and all that. So it's going to be tough, but if it was up to me, I would. I would push everything back. I would figure out a way to let the Bengals and let the Buffalo Bills play again because they earned the right to fight for that number one. You'd want to play that game instead mm -hmm. of just having an extra week to prepare for your, like, if, you know? If that, there's an idea the of the one, winning. If, there's if the, the idea one seed about is the, on the line. Yeah, because you're playing. It's exactly. between playing and, yeah. and you earn that. And I mean, Arrowhead you, you fight all season Buffalo. for that. Yeah. But if they do the winning percentage thing, yeah. it's not fair to the Bengals because True. there's no way they can True. get a one seed if yeah. they do the winning. It's just it's. It's a, it's a, it's a lot that goes. But into I do it. respect yeah. the league for doing what they did, post, postponing it because they don't have. There's no. There's no fair. Mm -mm. There really is not a fair solution no, here, no. and it's super sticky. And at the end of the day, they did what was right that night. Yeah. There, there's no need to send any other players back out there to play a football game knowing that what just happened to our family. So I don't care who gets the one seed. They did the right thing that night, making sure that we was all praying and going to be there for them. Your boy Aaron Rodgers was on yeah. with McAfee this week. He said mm -hmm. this all whole thing had him effed up. That's mm -hmm. the way he sort of described it. And then he was talking about playing the Lions, what it means to him, what it'll be like to get out, uh, to get out there. What what am I, how am I supposed to think <laughs> about this Packers team? Let's start here. Let's start here. When did, it, when did they really turn it around? I mean, they, they, they've, Take been me on the, the they've been on a four-game like, uh -oh. win streak. But to be honest with you, I truly feel like they turned it around the Miami game. Okay. When they caused that fumble um, to get the ball back before halftime when Mostert fumbled, because if the Dolphins go score, I'm like, ooh, the Pack is in trouble going 
to call yeah. their way back in this game. The turning point for me is when they caused that fumble in that game and they went down there and got some points going into halftime. I said the Packers is going to win this game, and they're starting to get confidence. They're starting to get swag. They're starting to play the right way like we thought they would play early in the season, and they're starting to get healthy at the right time. And they came out the second half. The defense played lights out. The defense play, been playing lights out for the last three weeks. And Aaron Rodgers is just making a play when he got to make the play. And that's scary. Why is that smile? I don't like that smile. <laughs> that, that's scary. And the I don't reason, like that. I kind of want the yeah. Lions to be in. No, Sorry, Aaron. No, I, no, I kind of no, do. No. That's scary. And it's scary for anybody that's fighting for this two seed. If I'm the Niners. Okay, talk to or me. Or if I'm the Minnesota Vikings, you know, even though <laughs> I'm riding high. This face? <laughs> even though I'm I, riding oh high oh right boy. now and all that good stuff, I do not want to see Aaron Rodgers at this seventh seed. If I'm the two seed, I think I might. Hey, y'all take a rest. Let me get this three seed and see Daniel Jones and the New York Giants, football Giants, because I don't want to see Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. And to me, everybody talks about pressure, right? Right. Aaron is going into the playoffs with zero pressure on him. And what I mean by that is who's expecting him to win? Who's expecting Aaron Rodgers oh, to go now, from the seventh seed to win the Super Bowl? Nobody. He's playing with house's money. He's in the playoffs. Everybody didn't think he would be in the playoffs. Well, he's not now he's in. <laughs> oh, he's going to get in. We're going to beat up oh, the First Detroit of all, you have, to, you have to beat the Lions to get in. <laughs> we are going okay, to. Okay, convince me of that. What okay. happens? No, I'm, first off, I'm going to start no, no, off by no, no, this. No, no, no. <laughs> what happens yeah. in these games mm -hmm. with his back? Because there's people who think that he doesn't handle pressure. That's why you're, mm -hmm. you came out with a defense for him in pressure. No doubt. He doesn't have any pressure because in a pressure situation, mm -hmm. sometimes it does not work out for yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Why right now is it working? Why does he have to wait to the final second? His back's against the wall. And what happens with him in those? You were with him with the run the table years. Yeah, I was with him when we had to win our last two to get in the playoffs. And we went on and we won the Super Bowl. And our back was against the wall every single game. And Aaron Rodgers responds. So when people talk to me about pressure, AR-12, you know, hey, you can't win them all. So everybody's always going to point at this. Hey, he didn't win this one under pressure. Well, I've seen him win a lot under pressure, yeah, too. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, number one, Aaron Rodgers don't lose in December at the crib. And if people don't know what at the crib means, that's at Lambeau Field, man. That's the crib where he walks straight What's from his stat? locker. Can someone look it up for me? <laughs> straight Hamilton from his locker to, his, to the stadium, right? And I he is and dominant. He is dominant in December, right? So you got the Detroit Lions coming in the building. He is going to dominate them and go into the playoffs. But not only that. It's not like Aaron Rodgers is just the one on this win streak. This defense is playing lights Jai out. Why is Jair so crazy? Like Jair is saying, y'all stop story? trying me. I know, why is <laughs> he so I'm the best corner <laughs> in I'm the like, National Football like League. I'm like, nobody doesn't But at the end of the day, he backed it up. And, and I was proud of him for taking the challenge to Justin Jefferson and backing that up and going out there and following them all over the field. But they got a mojo about him right now. And they kind of got the mojo that we had when we ran the table in 2010 to win the Super Bowl. And what I mean by that is everybody's like, you're going in, playing the number one seed, you, Falcons, you're playing the Eagles and all that. And we were getting off the bus. And I just remember seeing people getting off the bus, suited and booted like I am right now. And we was getting off the bus and we was like, these boys in trouble. Really? That that was just the mojo. That was the swag of the team. Like, we cannot be beat. They done let us in. Yeah. We are finna beat everybody. And you just seen the swag and the confidence people's walking with. I don't see And it. when tell you look me. in tell that locker room confidence. and you hear Jair talking, yeah. you hear Aaron talking, you hear him getting healthy, it's just the swag and the mojo of that team. And it's a four-game winning streak. And they about to get in the playoffs because it's going to be five. Okay, I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm, I love you, and whoever I'm is, sorry. And whoever is at that two seed, is in big, big trouble. You think? I him, do. Him up against Purdy? I do. Ooh, that would be we, a, do the Niners fans want that? Is it and I know they done had our number, you know, because they done beat me up and sent me home in the playoffs. <laughs> but do the Niners fans want Purdy against AR-12 and Aaron Rodgers playing with house money? Healthier than he's looked all season. Ooh, ooh mm. uh, 19 and 1 in mm -hmm. December. 19 and 1. They've only lost one game. Oh, in, my, in where and what? Say that again. Hey. December and January in the regular season, uh, just just yeah. Aaron or Aaron and Lafleur, Aaron and Lafleur together. I ask you why. And one. Why? You're saying he doesn't lose in December. Why? When you gotta have it, and you gotta be at your best, 
and you're a big time player. In the regular season? You make plays and you win the ball game. 19 and one in December, right? The weather don't matter, the cold don't matter. You go out there, you find ways to win. And that's what I'm saying. You can't bet against AR 12 in December, man. He And I think we're in December. <laughs> no, we're in, we're in January. No, it's, Jan it's December and January, 19 and one. It's time to go. And he had Lambo. So is it going to be him and, Rod Lambeau. Him and uh, Brady, you think? <sighs> Now that'd be crazy. What, who wins that would that be one? That would be crazy. I, I, I believe in, in Aaron and the Packers a little bit more than I believe in Tom and the Bucks. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a, I'm a Packer, mm -hmm. but the Bucks just haven't been playing good football. You know what I mean? They've been getting away and playing really bad teams, and they haven't been playing good football. The Packers have been playing really good football. And it's not even Aaron playing lights out, like I said, as a team. Special teams-wise, they mm -hmm. got it going right now. Defensively, they got it going right now. They just been playing really good I mean, football. Keyshawn, unbelievable. And it's rubbing off in that locker room, and they got it going right now, and that's scary. Uh, what are we saying? Got it going? What do you? What do you put your put your name on something? Here, what I'm say? saying, we got it going. Is everybody's in trouble <laughs> after this game? You see me looking at camera number one right now. I'm <laughs> seeing everybody's in trouble after we beat the Lions this weekend and get in the playoff. Nobody's safe, and I'm not going to be surprised if we are sitting where I live in Arizona <laughs> talking Green Bay Packers versus I don't know who for the Super Bowl. That was some good <laughs> WWE you know, audition. That was pretty good announcing there. Uh, okay, and, and who, what would be your dream matchup for Aaron Rodgers before we go? Let's oh, it got to be. It got to be him and Patty. I would, love to, I would love to see Aaron Rodgers and Patty Mahomes for all the marbles on the biggest stage for a Super Bowl ring. I hope it's there the Bengals no in them so you and I can Ooh, fight Jojo that Burrow whole two weeks. We'll be out, we'll be out, we'll be out in too. Arizona doing that. Hey, uh, I'm a Jojo Burrow fan. That would be a good one. I will see you at Super yeah, Bowl. Absolutely. Hopefully. Are you going home right now? This week? You know it. Yeah, oh God, get out of this rainy, <laughs> rainy you know place yeah, in Los Angeles. Yeah. James Jones, everybody, thank you for, uh, for hanging out with the heavy no topic problem. and giving us some perspective no on that. And we will have Eric Weddle up next, right here on Up and Adams. I gotta dress up next time this kid comes <laughs> rolling through. Jeez Louise. Back on Up and Adams show, big thanks to James Jones for wearing a nice turtleneck, not a hoodie under his jacket like I'm used to. We appreciate him. Rick Sosa uh, saying Harrison Phillips picked up the tab for dinner. How about this? At UC Medical for his former teammate DeMar Hamlin's family from the Bills staff, the doctors and nurses at the ICU unit, who we are so grateful for. An absolute class act from Harry is right. And we did have some positive updates this morning. Damar Hamlin responsive, making incredible strides and improvements. Uh, so uh, Harrison Phillips doing that was, I'm sure, a gesture that went a long way. And all the gestures of compassion that we're seeing around the league, that we're seeing from fans, um, from the big superstars in, in uh, our game towards uh, DeMar Hamlin and his family have really been beautiful. Uh, and we welcome in a fellow safety, uh, a veteran, a voice in the league, uh, Eric Weddle, and happy belated birthday to you, Eric. Thank you, thank you. What'd you do for your birthday? You know, ripe old age of 38, you know, just haven't hit my prime yet, just living it up. Went to sushi with, with the old lady, did presents in, in ice cream cake with the kids last night and it's a couple of presents that they did. You know, they always get geeked up to buy dad some presents. And What did they get you? Was, I got a, uh, a folding chair for the high school game so oh. I could, when I'm at the end of my, my daughter's uh, JV basketball games, I could barely walk down those stairs in my back. So got that. I got a little mobile speaker. Uh, to play some jams and tunes and some socks, which is always uh, convenient. And You're such a dad. God, <laughs> that's like what I get my dad. Yeah. And I got some like some some sweats, like super easy. Easy going. Well, happy birthday. What was the flavor ice cream cake? I must know. These are the it was a birthday questions. cake, oh, yeah. ice cream cake. That's from, the uh, best. Baskin Robbins. Yeah, it was good. I don't know if Chanel's going to like you calling her the old lady, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> You're probably sleeping on the couch tonight, Eric. No, I'm never, ever if I slept on the couch. No matter how how mad our arguments get, we always go to sleep together and we, we'll hash it out before the night is. I I refuse to ever sleep not in my bed at night. Marriage advice from Eric. Well, yeah. everybody! We love it. Uh, we, you know, we are uh, 
smiling. I think for, this is the first day I've smiled on the show this week with everything that's gone on uh, with the Demar Hamlin updates, and they, there was so <coughs> little known. And then today we got um, news of some improvements. And you know, you're a, a fellow safety. You play the game. You're talking about not being able to walk downstairs at a game because of your back and what you went through in this league. What are your thoughts on the, how this is all unfolded? Well, it was it was surreal, crazy. Uh, you know, you just, I've been playing football for a long time and never have seen something like that occur. And uh, a lot of emotions, like you're, you go through a rush of minutes, the uncertainty, the unknown, is he okay? Then seeing what we saw on TV, uh, hit home for everyone, right? Everyone differently. And the immediate aftermath is you just hope he's okay. Nothing else matters in the moment. Nothing else is concerning. You see the teammates and staff and everyone. It's it's fortunate uh, that that happened in that setting. Uh, quite honestly, if that had happened anywhere else, he's probably not living right now. So with the staff and the medical and the AD, AED, uh, uh, machine there to, to get him back going. So a lot to be thankful for. And, you know, every day we're just waiting and hearing for his improvements and just hoping and praying for the best. It's well said. We just had James Jones in here. I had Mark Ingram on. It was, it was very raw. It was Tuesday morning, and he's a current player, and, you know, he's been in the league for 11 years, so he's thinking, I'm sure, about his retirement a little bit. But they both said something to me. They both said, like, I never really thought my life could be at risk when I'm on the field. And it's obviously it is, it is always a risk, but it's not something that players think about. It's certainly not something fans think about or choose to not think about selfishly. Did you ever have that not like that thought in your head at any point in your career playing the way that you did so long no no honestly uh you know we we play football uh we're fortunate to play this game and uh did i ever think like my life was on the line no did did my process of thinking like i'm going out there and and willing to do whatever it takes uh, in my life on the line no like that's that's not the case, and it was never the case for me, and I don't believe that's the case for a lot of guys. I think what happened, uh, we don't really know how it happened, why it happened. Do I think it was because of the tackle and hit? I don't. I've made that tackle 20, 30 times in my career uh, and much worse. I just think it's unfortunate that it happened, and we don't know really know why it happened. The whole point of this point moving forward is that he gets better and he comes back to us. Uh, so... Uh, you know, but I'm, that's just me, and yeah. I'm not going to disregard anybody else, and that's their opinion, and that's their emotional attachment to it, and and everyone has a right to to how they think and feel. But for me personally, like I I gave it everything I had. You prepare mentally and physically, so on Sundays you just let it fly, and you live with with what happens. And it's just unfortunate that everyone had to see and and Demar's experience in this and. Just got to hope that he pulls through and he, and he'll live a long, healthy life after this. Bills, Patriots, Bengals, uh, Ravens, AFC North on the line. These are two teams that saw this in person. And then there's all the other players on all the other teams that have to play Week 18. If you were in one of those locker rooms, how would you approach getting yourself, like you're saying, mentally and physically ready for this game? Well, I mean... I, I look at it as as uh, that it wasn't so much part of the football game mm. in a sense. Like, well, yeah, it was in a football game, but do I think it was because of the the play that had happened? I don't. And and that for me, consciously, if I if I was on a team and and we're playing these games, I don't know. I don't think it's best if they play these games. Quite honestly. Uh, I think Brian Leaf had a great. Uh, I just uh, just heard it on his on some kind of podcast that he just said, cancel this this upcoming game, get rid of the Pro Bowl, and then give these guys a full two weeks to get their emotions right and get their heads right. Uh, it's not something easy that what we witness, and and let alone the teammates on the field. Like the, the people don't understand the bond that you make with your teammates. Uh, in a short amount of time, you know, DeMar was with that team for two years, but he's a brother to them. And and those guys are willing to do whatever it takes for him and his family. That's just the way the locker room is. So to try to tell these guys, they got to go out and play. Like, I don't know if that's the best option. I don't know how I would do because I'm not playing now, 
uh, you know, yesterday I was with my, my high school team and we had a moment where we brought up that situation and we brought up the, uh, the, the, the play and the DeMar and, and everything that's going on and talked about their feelings and emotions and what they thought about it. And just to get everything out in the air, like there is no right or wrong answer in this situation. It's never been done. Like, you know, 1971 with, with, uh, the last known, uh, you know, it's 50 years ago. So it's just, uh, uncharted waters and you're just trying to navigate it, uh, as best you can, uh, and move forward and hope for DeMar's case that he comes back to us. You're coaching high school football next year. You're with your team now. You're clearly very committed. I think you could be an NFL coaching candidate if you chose to. Uh, how will this sort of change your approach or your style? Did it even yesterday? Like, did you think you'd be sitting there talking about feelings and, and the mentality of this? Because like, I, I, for one, am super, I don't want to use the word impressed. I'm, I'm, I like what I'm seeing from the coaches around the league and how they're dealing with this. Well, I think the game, the, the game has changed over the last decade, right? It's guys are dealing with a lot more outside of football and you're trying to have a grasp on the mental side of what we're going through and what we have to go through to play this game. So I think it's been more of an emphasis on the mental side and, how are guys doing, checking in on them, and, and the support staff that, that organizations are putting together. And I think this is the same, just building off that, right? Like, uh, you know, there's there's so much that kids deal with and players deal with outside of the game that socially, uh, mentally, you know, depression, anxiety, like all those things are real. So you're trying to uh, be there for them and support them. Like the biggest thing that I was trying to tell my guys is, you know, your feelings matter and, and those thoughts and uh, what you're feeling, it, it's okay to get out. And if you don't feel comfortable in front of your team setting, then, then talk to me on the side because ultimately I'm here to help them, right? In any capacity, on mm -hmm. the field, off the field. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's sometimes we all feel alone and it's nice just to have someone there to listen and to help them. And that goes from the NFL down to Pop Warner everything in between when you when you have uh, a direction to help and be there that's that's what matters most now oh, coach Weddle, i think you're gonna have a trophy case full of stuff but we check that, but... back uh in with you in five years we also might see your name we will see your name on a list or two we got a, a list revealed to us yesterday we want to take a look at with you um it is of course the <clears throat> 15 finalists announced for the 2023 Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, anybody stick out to you? Joe Thomas, Dwight Freeney, Darrell Rivas, Darren yeah. Woodson? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, D. Wood, I always, I watched him growing up. And three that stick out, honestly, are Patrick Willis, Darrell Rivas, and Joe Thomas. They were the 07 draft class with me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, those guys were just incredible. Not just football players, but leaders, great men. Anyone you ask about those guys uh, were probably the best teammate. They were accountable. They worked their tails off, uh, both mentally, physically. They're students of the game. Like Those guys are the ones that you looked up to when you were playing the game as teammates, whether you're in the Niners, Jets, or the, or the Browns. So very cool to see, and it, and it uh, puts things in perspective that I played with those guys, competed against them, and were fans of those guys. And... Just uh, awesome to see. It means that I'm really old, too. But that, it means, that, I mean, it's crazy because you played <laughs> last year and you won a Super Bowl. Like that's, uh, I look at that list and I'm like, those guys are eligible. Weddle was out, out here win, winning ships oh my gosh. five, ten months ago. Like, what are we talking about? When that moment Seriously. and that day comes for you to be on that list, what will that I don't know to if you? that's ever going to happen, but, uh, you know, I, I try to live, I try to live with... Uh, Prepare for the worst, hope for the best, and uh, and live with no regrets. So I, I, it's hard to even fathom something like that because those guys is is just incredible talents and mm. incredible human beings. So I don't know. I don't really stress or worry about it. It would be a, an honor, but you know, it's it's a long ways away to even to start thinking about it. But. You know, I did everything I could and, and gave a mile, and, and that's I, I can lay sleep at night knowing I did that. So. And you got the hardware too, my friend. Now, now you are do doing the a little grandpa uh, rocking chair vibe right now. I don't really know. <laughs>
There's a lot of this going on. <laughs> ah, you know, it's it's a new year, 2023, new new beginnings. You know, I'm still trying. I'm still hurt over my Utes getting getting taken to the woodshed by Penn State. And, oh, I know. Uh, it's never <laughs> never good to have back 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 to back Rose Bowl losses. So I'm, I'm still like, but hey, it's it's. We're all right. We're okay. We're, We're okay. okay. The, the arrow is okay. going. The arrow is going up for us. So, it was an amazing atmosphere out there. Like you know, sixty, seventy thousand uh, Utah fans. Just the support and uh, great environment. Just you know, bummed about the loss. All right, Grandpa Weddle. We'll let you go and enjoy your knit <laughs> socks for your birthday. We appreciate you. Happy belated birthday. And we always love Thank having you. you, but especially with your thoughts as a, uh, a legend in this league. So we appreciate you, and we will see you You're the best next case. week. He's got to get the Utes in there. Just got to wedge it in. <laughs> <laughs> Front Office Sports saying DeMar Hamlin's number three jersey has been Fanatic's top seller among all sports since Monday night. Fanatic's plans to donate all proceeds. I thought it was some proceeds. All proceeds. You'd love to see it from Hamlin's jersey sale to the Toy Drive, which has more than $5.5 million in donations. Sauce wanted a jersey. He said, hey, can I wear one for pregame? Uh, and he said that a jersey wouldn't be there in time. And Michael Rubin, who has a lot to do with all of those proceeds, going to the right place, said, we got you. So be on the lookout for Sauce and players all around the league showing all love for three. Saturday, Chiefs take on the Raiders. We'll get to that. Titans, Jags. Tennessee announced Monday they're starting. Josh Dobbs, Bills, Pats, just Dolphins. Mike McDaniel ruled Tua out for that one. Brown Steelers take a place the same time as New England. Pittsburgh, Miami competing for the final wild card spot. NFL decided yesterday to put Bengals, Ravens, interestingly, in the 1 p.m. window. Let's we take a look at the 4 p.m. games. You've got Lions, Packers, NFC side, uh, Eagles, Giants. I mean, it's all in the later window. Cowboys, Commanders, Cardinals, Niners. They're at the same time as the NFC. The East title and number one seed in the conference are up for grabs situation. So lots of things to play for uh, this week. It's a, it's a pivotal week. It'll be a heavy week, of course. Uh, everything's focused on DeMar Hamlin and his health, of course. Uh, Hamilton, you have been such a good friend to me this week, just talking me through things and getting your perspective, uh, and I appreciate you. But if, if we're putting that aside for one moment as we move forward to games that have to be played, this Bengals uh, bill thing is going to really muck up the one seed. Yeah, and and it's still up in the air as to what the NFL is going to do here with that game. If it doesn't get played, if they decide to cancel the game altogether, the one seed in the AFC would come down to winning percentage, which means if the Chiefs win against the Raiders on Saturday afternoon, the it. Chiefs would clinch the one seed. If the Chiefs lose to the Raiders and the Bills beat the Patriots on Sunday, then the Bills would get the one seed the Bengals under that scenario would have no chance to get the one seed anymore so there's no real fair way to do it I know we're going to go through winning percentage ideas and I know Mike Florio has been all over it uh which we credit for football talk that's what we do on our show so we'll be with you guys tomorrow and breaking that down further